So we're continuing on from the last lecture and we will now rewrite this equation which we derived. Please note, please look at the last lecture if you haven't watched it you won't know what's going on. So we'll rewrite these equations d12 is not d12 this is d prime squared and this point this term was cancelled plus i um, So these are those equations here. And we're going to see that we have some interaction between the loss terms here. And we have some interaction between the losses here. But what is actually uh, the loss which is occurring in the material? If we turn to our previous assumption that S and D double primes are small, then we all can have we have a multiplication here. We have here s prime prime times d prime prime, so that's also ought to be small. So what we're now left with is this term right here. So we s prime d prime squared divided by s prime squared plus s double prime squared, and this is uh, the equivalent real part. Perhaps we could also get rid of this s prime squared. That is not a bad assumption. Remember before I forgot that these are squareds, but now we remembered, so we could we can cancel that one out because it's too small. As regard with regards to this, um, this s prime prime and this d double prime, they're not nothing's cancel nothing's uh wrong here you could say so if you considered now uh, this imaginary term we can take out the d portion d prime because that's common between both sides and we'll have this s1 squared. So now if we find a ratio uh, between this i, this r and this i, we will have the losses. Except when we want to find this ratio, we know that the, uh, the real portion, uh, this is actually a phase lag. So this is actually going to end up lagging. Um, you know, we apply that electric field and we get the energy lost, stored and lost, this is going to be ahead. So therefore, because this needs to be ahead, we need to utilize a negative sign here. In order to use a negative sign here, we have to change all of the other signs. Therefore, if you erase this, write this negative, this becomes positive, this becomes a negative, uh, and therefore, uh, we have the correct notation. So writing the real part, or sorry, the imaginary part over the real part, we're going to get the losses. So this is d double d single prime s d prime d double prime minus s double prime d prime and then we have it divided by s single prime squared so this division and uh, I mentioned over here uh, these two will cancel out and this will just leave one prime we're going to have d double prime squared divided by s prime and uh, we can clearly simplify this equation we will cancel one of these primes out 
and we'll cancel this out and cancel one of those primes out. So what are we left with here? We're left with S prime D double prime minus S double prime D prime divided by so this term, this term completely goes away D prime and this one goes on the bottom after it kill after it get rid of, get rid uh, is get rid of we're on rid of so s prime so this is the relationship which we have uh, which we can sort of simplify even more um, by splitting the equations uh, we have on this side we have d double prime divided by d prime minus uh, what we have this side right here s double prime d prime divided by s prime so we mentioned this is going to be the tangent phi remember because uh, d double prime over d prime is tangent phi this right here that's tangent delta or tangent that's tangent phi this is tangent theta and this is d prime so actually you see how uh, the interaction works out be between the loss energy and the stored energy going back to the top recounting our steps um, which were quite a few uh, first we began with talking regarding the frequency we have to assume low frequency we apply an electric field to the PO's electric material we assume a complex energy which means some part is lost some part is stored energy uh, we continue the derivation uh, we found this kind of d squared over s term uh, which is occurring right here this d squared over s term uh, we keep simplifying this equation assuming that d double prime is small and d s s double prime is small so then that squared term is essentially zero continue with that uh, idea we decide to uh, split the terms up into real and imaginary portions and then uh, after splitting the terms into real and imaginary we find that we can simplify um, this ratio between the d prime and the d double prime we can simplify the ratio between the s prime and the s double prime uh, as such any full excuse me uh, this is actually not there it cancelled out right here so that cancelled out when we we're talking about this portion so we really get um, this which is quite you know a little bit awkward we are seeing the imaginary portions of this por uh, this problem reducing the total loss as this is being a reduction of that so now we're seeing these losses tangent so this is the all I'm going to call tangent um, or how about we'll do this we'll call this the ratio between this energy lost and the change in energy stored by applying sorry, an electric field so we see that um, with regards to the mechanical energy uh, we have piezoelectricity uh, or this piezoelectric loss which is not a, would, would be kind of hesitating to call that a loss it's a tangent factor it's a relationship between the uh, imaginary and real part of the piezoelectric charge constant and we see that with the relationship between the mechanical loss so it seems to the fact that mechanical loss is sort of subtracting off of this piezoelectric loss and uh, therefore with the definitions we've chosen 
uh, for this derivation. Uh, we have only one way to conclude about this piezoelectric loss. We have only one thing that we can really say about it All right, at this point. So we don't know what this number is yet because you can't because you got to measure the uh, losses occurring in the material to find it out. Uh, so basically, what what could be a physical value for this number? So this number we know is positive. What could be a physical value? Probably this number, you know, it's not going to be less than. I'll take this case. So this is not going to happen. This is not true. Why cannot it be true? We get negative loss. Loss is not negative. You don't lose your loss energy. You you lose it. You don't lose negative energy. That's actually gaining energy. So that kind of defeats the idea. So this has to be. So it has to be true that tangent phi has to be greater. And tangent delta. Actually, as well, tangent phi or tangent delta has to be two times tangent phi. And why is that? Why does it have to be two times? Because, let's take a look here, tangent delta minus tangent phi, if this equals tangent phi, or sorry, if this equals tangent delta, or that means th there is no benefit, or basically this piezoelectric loss is just trying to compensate this equation uh, for this other loss which is occurring. Because we need piezoelectric loss to kind of compensate the equation so it, the energy uh, balance works out properly. Because remember, we had this S star on the bottom, we had this D squared, DS, D. If this was the case, we would completely end up with a negative tangent. And this number is always positive. So this would cause a negative tangent. And this, but, but, and, but, and because of this would be a negative tangent, it would mean uh, the opposite of loss. So in order to uh, uh, re re recompense, recompensate uh, the loss mechanism, which is our, which is our, which are occurring, um, and due to the way we're writing these equations now, if we assume that no energy loss occurs between the transaction between electrical and mechanical energy. See, when we're changing, when, when we're when we're applying an electric field uh, to the material, when we're applying this electric field, we are storing mechanical energy. So we're changing the mechanical energy. Therefore, we should have mechanical energy lost. If this is true, basically, if tangent phi is equal to two times the tangent, sorry, phi, two times the mechanical loss, then we just have only mechanical loss occurring. So th and then we know that this equation right here is just a way for us to write the stored energy. Just a way for us to write the, to relate the, the electrical energy squared to the stored mechanical energy. Because when this term comes on the bottom, it's going to cause us a negative tangent term. And these representations, you know, as, as uh, these complex numbers, they're only as good if they represent the physical reality. And they would not represent physical reality in this case with this coupling term if, if, if uh, this uh, piezoelectric term was not equal to 2 times tangent uh, phi. So we sort of need this term. Uh, to properly account uh, for piezoelectric uh, interaction in the material. And if this is true, uh, which it is in materials, uh, then we don't have anything extra beyond piezoelectric loss. Piezoelectric loss is a way to compensate uh, for the different forms which uh, piezoelectric energy 
and their materials are, are mentioned.